welcome to easy kids drb polytechnic easy solutions once again so last few videos are uh, very uh, simple problems only okay so uh, we have almost exhausted uh, moderate and uh, tougher problems it seems okay so in one video we can see around uh, four to five problems from now that's a plan yes we got the essence already in the past videos so that we can quickly connect so what's given in a vlsa design that's your digital logic design or digital system design two criteria to be met okay what are the most important criteria with what criteria we make a digital logic design dld that belong to either combination logic design or sequential logic design so any digital logic design so the advanced is our uh, vlsa okay yes if we follow the basic idea of uh, dld is uh, still the idea of vlsa so what is the main role of dld is there are uh, important specs we considered first thing is size second thing is speed even in digital logic design this is what we follow we need to have a size as minimal as possible minimum size that's why we have uh, okay k maps for minimal sop solution and k maps for k map for minimal pos solution sop implemented only by using nans pos implemented only by using nor logic gates okay so there we talk about usage of minimal gates okay that's a overall size or hardware we can say so size minimum speed must be as much as possible maximum that's where the a uh, worst case delay of uh, uh, combination logic design uh, or a sequential logic design come into play to decide the speed okay so we have answered some problems related to the worst case delay okay that is talking about the speed only so size speed then we talk about power okay so three important things okay usually three important objectives while making a digital logic design so same criteria we have to follow so he is talking about only two criteria now what are the two criteria he is talking about yes okay, quickly go through that and then freeze your answer so maximization of hardware no we want to have a minimum hardware and maximization of speed is nothing but at what clock frequency it can operate okay that's with respect to the sld so in sequential logic design it's all about what is a maximum clock the sequential logic design can operate okay right so with reference to that you can comment on the solution so manual hardware maximum clock speed then rest of the options so only two are having okay three are having maximum clock okay so only uh, one is having minimum hardware so minimum hardware maximum clock speed is a requirement in any visual logic design that's a simple answer <clears throat> simple problem easy answer next one <clears throat> so this one everyone can say okay so as a unit of power okay so unit of power by default in standard okay it's in watts okay so power is nothing but uh, rate of utilization of energy that is so many joules per second okay that's what given as joules per coulombs into coulombs per second in our circuit analysis so this joules per coulomb is voltage coulomb per second is the current so we feel like volt into amps that's what we call as watts okay that's electrical watts volt into amps it's a common sense or universal power always joules per second that's what we call or given by the unit watts okay that's another simple one more problem <clears throat> these are easy to answer and relevant to this problem already we have answered there we had a sampler and quantizer instead of that is having something uh, different for us now an analog signal again getting digitized carries four bits in each signaling interval each signaling interval is meaning something then 8000 signaling intervals probably i feel like is talking about the sampling interval sampling interval only is probably calling it as a signaling interval so the sampling space i didn't mention but instead how many samples okay is going to collect in one second is mentioned so he is saying that 8000 
uh, signaling intervals okay sample intervals means uh, so it is nothing but 8000 samples per second very simple problem and each signaling interval how many bits it is carrying the analog signal is now quantized by 4 bit that's what it means it's not quantized earlier quantized by 8 bit indirectly is giving the meaning so same concept is making two different problems two different perceptions is giving that's all okay so the same perception two different way of communicating things okay so it's a 4 bit so that means four bits per sample that's all four bits per sample same root so sample sample will get cancelled and put the result in kbps okay kilo bits per second okay what is that eight thousand into four is your answer so there is going to be thirty two thousands what bits per second bits per second nothing but thirty two kilo bits per second shortly we call it as bit rate okay KBPS. Yes, the right answer is option B is the correct answer. Okay. That's another easy problem. Next one. And this point is already conveyed. So, question is strictly valid only for linear systems, linear circuits. Okay. So, yes, option C instead of it. Say, say, for example, you can try y is equal to mx. If we have, that's perfectly a linear system, whereas even you try another equation of state line y is equal to mx plus c, this itself will not obey the principle of linearity. This itself, as per the principle of linearity, should be called as nonlinear. This will obey superposition. This will violate superposition. So, if anyone want to be linear, it has to behave like y equal to mx. So, only linear circuits are capable of doing this. So, the answer is option c. Okay. Okay, this is a little time consuming problem. We can do it. Okay, it's not directly uh, connectable one. So we have to apply the fundamental and get the solution. So what he's trying to uh, say, we'll understand. The output expression for AND or invert circuit. You have a AOI. Okay, a logic uh, realization. Having one AND gate with the input. So yes, just obey what is what he's saying. One AND gate with inputs. What inputs? A, B, C, D. A, B, C and D, one AND gate with inputs A, B, C and D. So A is given, B is given, C is given, D is given. So the output is going to be AND output. So it's going to be A, B, C, D will be the output of this AND gate. Okay, one uh, AND gate with inputs A, B, C, D. AND, okay, so he's having another AND gate with E and D, with E and F. Okay, so we have another AND gate that is sensing it's a two input AND gate. So take that way as per the statement by the designer. So the output is going to be E dot F. So it's A. First, what we are getting is A. So the output expression for AND or invert is set. So he commented only about the AND gates and how this products, okay, we call them as products. So this is a product one, this is a product one. So how we operate this, okay, how we utilize this product, it didn't say, but he has given a logic AND or invert means so I can assume something, okay, so I can't give the answer, the problem lacks clarity, but still, okay, so I have to give the answer in the examination. So then I make my own assumption, assume that this products, okay, are connected to an R gate, it is mentioned, and probably you said AOI, so first and is over, so probably I will feel there is a R, there is a not, okay, so let me take, it's not mentioned clearly, Okay, I'm imagining and then moving forward. Okay, yes, that's my R gate. So, and is then products are generated. So, then going for R and then a not. Okay, so you can say this combinedly an R. Okay, so that means output is going to be say some function F is getting realized. So, what is the signal here means? You're going to add this signal and this signal. So let this is X and this is Y. Result is going to be X or Y and F will become X or Y the whole but X or will be the result. So let us expand. Okay, assuming. Okay, so I made my own assumption here. So it's lagging in clarity. What to do for this results of the two AND gates? It didn't say. So he said AND or invert. So I'm connecting logically. That's all. Okay. So if the any mistake uh, from the designer side, marks to all will be given, but still assuming it's okay i'll complete the problem okay so f is equal to x or y the whole bar x is a b c d 
x is same as d and y is e f so then this whole bar then applying d morgans you'll get a b c d the whole bar dot e f the whole bar you will get then as a result you will end up with again apply d morgans then you will get a bar r b bar r c bar r d bar the whole into e bar r f bar okay yes so you check whether this is available or this is available whichever is there that is your answer so it looks like option d yes that's your option okay so imagining whatever is in white we have imagined for that no instruction given by the designer that's the best possible answer for this simple problem another one from digital next okay so already given a laplace of a parabolic signal acceleration command so you should remember r of t equal to del of t implies unit impulse r of t is equal to a into u of t is a standard step r of t is equal to a t into u of t is your standard ramp and r of t is equal to a t square by 2 into u of t is your parabolic okay so the corresponding laplaces will be this is one this will be a by s this will be a by s square this will be a by s cube that's why okay we'll get uh, uh, Laplace of uh, t square will be okay. Laplace of t square will be two factorial by s cube. Okay, to cancel that two factorial only, we consider this two instead of because it's a a t into u of t, then it is a t square into u of t. Why it is not a t square into u of t? Reason is to cancel that two, so that you'll get a by s cube as a, a command in Laplace domain. So this is your R of s for the corresponding input command. So the problem is over. Okay, so the answer is for the ramp signal. So option C is the correct answer. Okay, A by S square. S is a Laplace operator. Okay, simple. It's an identity we have to remember. Okay. Then the next problem from controls. If a root of the transfer function is lying on the negative real axis, the impulse response and the stability is so root of a transfer function let me take only one root like there is a root okay of a transfer function that's a pole of a transfer function so it's one pole system means my system will be something like this it's one by s plus two then yes you can imagine such a system and then give the answer very easily so instead of playing theoretically always have a simple example relevant to the statement given so we have uh, one root of a transfer function that's a root of a transfer function means root of what root of what numerator is there root of denominator is there and we should feel it's a root of denominator only okay right root of the characteristic equation only even though he didn't say we have to read his mind and take it accordingly okay so that's it that makes sense so i have taken that root in the denominator that is on the negative real axis the impulse response and stability is so apply impulse input just now i said so the level plus of uh, uh, R of t, that's uh, Laplace of your uh, del of t is equal to 1 means then, so your R of s will become, so this is R of t, let me say, so then R of s is equal to 1 then, so let me go for the output response, so the output is C of s, so then C of s will be equal to R of s into what, your transfer function, that is 1 by s plus 2, since R of s equal to 1 for the impulse input, unit impulse, so C of s will be the transfer function itself, then apply Laplace inverse, you will end up with c of t equal to a power minus 2t into u of t. Then with this, you can comment and hope you remember the identity Laplace of e power minus a t is equal to 1 by s plus a. So that it is already in the s plus a form, apply Laplace inverse. Okay, so you can have a transition from Laplace transform, sorry, c of s to c of t using Laplace transform inverse. Yes, that's it. That's what going to give the answer what is the point so if you plot c of t then it is going to begin with one so initially zero for t less than zero second at zero second it will rise to one and then it will decay and converts to zero converts to zero reaching so bounded output output is stable okay converging means it's a stable system so it's exponentially decaying and stable system 
So I mean, not to say what is your answer. You know it now. Okay. Yes, that's how you need to help yourself. Take a simple transfer function relevant to what is given. Then you can conclude it quickly. Okay. So don't complicate yourself by taking second order or third order. Take a simple first order. Apply unit impulse and see. Okay. Because he said impulse. Okay. Go with that. Okay. So instability. So the impulse response is decaying response and it is converging to steady state. So it is absolutely stable system. And moreover, you have a pole on left hand side. So it's a absolutely stable system. So the right answer is option A. Exponentially decaying response, impulse response, and it is getting, it is stable. <clears throat> in fact, this is what in signal system we call it as impulse response of the system. Whereas in signals and systems, this is referred by, the system is referred by H of T. That H of T is its impulse response only. Okay, right? So that's where you can connect both the, the signals and systems and the control systems. Okay. So that is a correct answer for this problem. Yes, uh, with this, let me conclude this video. Uh, we'll answer the remaining problems <clears throat> with one more video. Okay, so thanks for watching. Okay, you can subscribe the channel and also comment on uh, any updates needed or clarity needed, then we'll update you with a better video. Thank you.